We ask now that you will take from us the weariness of this day and give us an alertness that will be enabled to grasp your word and profit spiritually from it. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, now we're in Job and we're, we're doing in these few moments this evening half the book. So uh, remember, he's, he starts out, the man is wealthy, he is loaded, he has a huge family, he is the epitome of success, and he loses everything. He loses all his possessions, he loses all of his children, and uh, wished he had lost his wife, but he's still stuck with her. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, of course, we see what's going on behind the scenes that, between Satan and God, of which Job knows nothing. And then, uh, finally, his health is taken from him. And in the midst of this, uh, in the area someplace, though not exactly next door, come three friends. And the theme, so we don't lose sight of where we're going, the theme of the book is? Suffering. And the key verse is? 121, which you should have clearly marked, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked I'll return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in, in spite of his tremendous loss, he obviously has a good attitude. And uh, that he has not lost. His three friends come. And we usually go very hard on these people, these three men. But in every situation, there's a mix of good and bad, a mix of positives and negatives. And so before we go too hard on these fellows, oh, what are some positives with them? What? They, they sat for seven days with him and didn't say. Well, well, even before that. They traveled. To they come came. They him. came. Uh, they came to see him. So when did you last visit a sick person, you know? Uh, it's not exactly like going to the county fair. And uh, it can be a kind of depressing experience at times. And... You, you, you look at him uh, and uh, they, they come and you look at verse 12 of chapter 2. They did not recognize him. He is in such a physical mess, at least dermatologically, that he is unrecognizable. I don't know if you've had the experience, but I have. I've, you know, gone into a hospital room to visit somebody and at the door paused and drew back. I have the wrong room. I thought I did not recognize the person. Uh, and uh, illness and had not seen them for some time and so on. And... Uh, so you, you know he was in a, a terrible condition. They knew him, but they did not recognize him. So first of all, it, they're to be commended, they came. And then as you indicated, uh, they were quiet for seven days. So the question comes, what do you say when you go to visit a sick person? Well, say nothing. I've discovered they often talk, people, you know, 
If they're ill, or particularly in the hospital, they want to talk about what's wrong with them and what tests they had. And of course, they always get tests, and the hospital never runs out of tests. Uh, and uh, they give them, and then they repeat them, and then they keep giving more tests. More, to more, and more tests. Yeah, yes, it, 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 it keeps going. It is an amazing thing. And of course, this all relates to the bill, we understand. And uh, that's, that's why uh, all of this goes on. And it's amazing, you know, particularly with an older person, they can go in the hospital and have a string of tests come back th three weeks later and all the tests are done again because uh, there could be a change. You never know. Uh, and so they do them all again. Just, Pastor, just a, a side on that. Um, I have some tests that are due because, you know, they were done when I had that lung um, uh -huh. lymph node and uh, I had to have the ultrasound biopsy and everything. So this is like a follow-up, right? Well, I have four different tests I have to have done. So I called and... How I many? Four. Okay. So I called and I made an appointment for these four tests all together on one day at Christ. I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, you made it possible that I could just go and spend the whole day and be done, right? Well, a week later, I get a call from the insurance company. Well, we want you to go here on this day for this test because it's cheaper. We want you to go here on this day for this test because it's cheaper. I said, you know what? I'm going to go the day I scheduled them. It's all scheduled, one right after the other, and I'm done in one day. But you're right, it's all about the money. Yo, you know, it's, it's the bottom line, it's the bottom line, yeah, okay. So, first of all, they came. Next, they're quiet. And sometimes you just let, let the person talk, you know, and uh, so. And I think uh, a person in the hospital particularly sees enough strangers, all these medical people parading through. To see a familiar face alone, is, that's a blessing in itself. And uh, these are friends of Job, and they are all uh, familiar faces to him and so on. And so they come and they, they are quiet. The great advantage of not saying anything is that you do not say anything wrong. And there are a lot of things to say to say wrong. Uh, you, you do not say what you think. Oh, you look awful. <laughs> well, obviously, they're in the hospital, you know. They're not headed for a style show someplace, and uh, so and, and then, then remarks, you know, like, boy, you know, my uncle had what, what, what you got, and he didn't last a week. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you, 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 you avoid saying negative stuff, and you, you avoid uh, giving any medical advice that that's not uh, or suggestions that uh, you know are you getting any better don't you think you should change doctors <laughs> uh, you know you're right Pastor Vernon a lot of my patients throughout the years sometimes they were just happy to have a familiar face. Oh, yes. Sit with them by the bedside, hold their hand, yeah. watch some TV, depending on what yeah. the relationship yeah. was. Yeah. They were just happy for that. You're right. Yeah, okay. And so you, you don't say anything negative, anything dark, anything, anything gloomy. Uh, so the advantage of being quiet and certainly. I remember some years back, the... This lady, she was a member of our church, I don't know where she is now, moved away, had twins, and one just had a lot of problems, boys, one a lot of problems. 
And this kid was in one of the top hospitals in Chicago. And he was not doing well, let's, let's say. I saw he was not doing well. She knew he was not doing well. I, this is not a secret. And so one day she phones me. Uh, should I change doctors? Who would you recommend? Well, I said, let me get back to you. Uh, I made a few calls, and I got back to her. And I said, what I have found out is any doctor you change to will be consulting with the one you have. She had the top one. The kid died, you know. That doctors lose all their patients, you know. You 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 don't don't linger by the back door of the hospital. It's it's depressing, and uh, and uh, so and especially now, uh, you, you said you know somebody said you think I should change doctors. First of all, it's a team. It's not one. Next, they're consulting with the best in the country. Uh, and the top information, whether it's from Boston or it's from Mayo's and Rochester, they have it. And you're not going to gain anything by, by shifting around. So you, you, you don't get involved in these things. You, you may not say much of anything, maybe a short prayer or leave a good verse of Scripture with them and be gone. But these fellows, you've got all their names in one, you're underlining them in, in, in two, eleven, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. In chapter 3 now, let's go. Uh, this is the first cycle. The first cycle runs chapters 3 through 14, 3 through 14. By a, there are going to be three of these cycles. And by cycle, we mean that one person speaks and the next answers and so on. So this, this cycle starts out with Job speaking. Finally. They've come there. They're sitting there staring at him for, for a week. And he, so he breaks the silence, and he is depressed. And this is not unusual. Uh, they're talking now, of course, in the hospitals more than ever about, quote, holistic medicine, that it's not just... Uh, uh, a physical problem, but the, the person has a mind also and a soul, and there's more to him than, than a gallbladder or an appendix or something. And uh, it, it used to be, and I have heard it in the hospital, you know, it's, they say, somebody, nurse by the desk, uh, have, you, have you checked on the gallbladder in room 310? You, you know, as though there's no person there. Uh, oh, mercy. But that, that day is past, and, uh, wonderfully. And they're thinking of the whole person. And uh, so you, you get sick physically. There is just a normal, natural tendency to get down psychologically, mentally, spiritually. Uh, and Job is there. He's down. Well, look, th this is a multiple whammy here. He's lost all his possessions. He's lost all his family except his wife. He's lost his health. If anybody had a reason to be depressed, He's, he's got it, full-blown. 
So let the day perish on which I was born, verse chapter 3, verse 3. In other words, I wish I was never born. Why, why am I here? If this is life, I'm not interested, you know. Uh, verse 11, you're underlining. Why did I not die at birth? Oh. Verse 25, chapter 3. The thing that I fear comes upon me, what I dread, I'm not at ease. Verse 26, I'm quiet, I have no rest, trouble comes. In other words, uh, I'm wiped out, is what he's saying. It's, this is uh, not unusual with a sick person. There are all kinds of thoughts. Will I ever get well? Am I going to die? Uh, you, you know. And so for to a person to be down, that's why I say when you visit somebody, anything cheerful, any, any good news, uh, anything, quote, from the outside world that you can bring to them, they're watching television. And you know that's mostly bad news. Yes. <laughs> this, I don't know why they have that in the rooms. They should have special programming. They should have... Evening bad news. <laughs> yeah, should have comedians on, you know. Laughter is good. Uh, but uh, uh, so, so if you can bring something up, something sunshiny, something positive, cheery, you, you're on track. Now, we, we, so this starts cycle one, chapter three. You've underlined Job opened his mouth. It's important to pay attention to whom... Uh, these words come from. Who is speaking? Now, chapter 4. Eliphaz. He apparently is the oldest of the three, so he has the edge, and he starts to speak. And uh, he has got it all figured out. Eliphaz is drawing on his experience. And underline in verse 8, uh, as I have seen, in other words, I'm going to share my observations with you. This is what I know. And of course, any individual, any one of us know very little, not much. And so our experience is limited. And if that's all you've got, you don't have much. But he has Job's situation all figured out. He knows from his experience what the trouble is. Uh, what he doesn't know is what? What? Everything that Job's been through, right? What? Everything that Job has been through. Oh, well, no, he's, he, he knows that. He knows he's lost everything. He knows his kids are gone. He, he can see his medical condition. He doesn't know about what? the devil coming okay. to God. Okay, what's going on in heaven? Mm -hmm. Satan coming and this conversation between... Job doesn't know that, and Eliphaz doesn't know that. And that's a kind of a warning to each of us. Before you launch into judging a situation or a person, be sure you got your facts. He doesn't have all the facts. And that's why he misses it, not slightly, but he misses the deal 100%. He has it all figured out. What's the problem? <laughs> What's the problem? He's just working from his own experience. Uh, he has a small amount of experience. Well, yes, but what's from what, what's Job's? What does he say Job's problem is? Um, he wasn't right with God. Okay, Job, you're a big sinner. You you've messed up spiritually. You've sinned against God, and what has happened to you? You got coming. And isn't that also him judging Job? Oh, yes. Oh, he's coming down with the hammer on him. Yes. Look, look at verse 7. Remember, 
who that was innocent ever perished. Oh no, Job, you're you you've put your foot in it and you're you're in trouble here. And he starts out with some <coughs> nice verse three. Behold, you have instructed many, you've strengthened the weak. Verse four, your words have upheld some people. But now verse five, but <laughs> Now comes the other side of the coin here. Uh, you're impatient and so on. It's not your fear of God, so on. And uh, you're, you, you, you've sinned, and that's your trouble. Verse 17, can a mortal man be right before God? Not you, Job, especially, especially. And uh, verse 10, even his servants he puts to trust his angels he charges with air. How much more those who dwell in houses of clay. In other words, Job, you're catching it. But if you'd get right with God, and it's because of all the bad things you've done. But you go back to the book. You go back to uh, chapter 1, verse 1. He's blameless. He's upright. He feared God. One one. He turned away from evil. Blah. Uh, and uh, no, this is not a life as. So, before, uh, you know. So when your friend's car is totaled, you don't look at him and say, "Well, God caught up with you, didn't he?" <laughs> You don't know. You don't know. It could have been the other person's fault 100%. And, and uh, be, don't be in a life as is, is the point. Uh, chapter 5, verse 7 is a famous text, too, which is just uh, true. Man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Uh, that that's 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 life. Now, let's see. Let's uh, verse sixteen of chapter five. The poor have no hope. In other words, uh, a person who is totally. Let's take a hard look at the word hope. A person who is totally devoid of hope is Jack. you're close that's not the word I'm thinking of suicidal yes. a person who's totally devoid of hope is suicidal <laughs> and he's dead he's going to be dead uh, so He's stripping hope. Okay, so Eliphaz uh, chapters uh, 4 and 5 has given his speech. Job answers. This is the cycle we're talking about. Chapter 6, you're underlining, Job answered. And uh, uh, some things, look at verse 12. Is my strength the strength of stones? In other words, boy, I, I'm not tough enough to handle all of this. My flesh, bronze, no. 14, he who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes fear of the Almighty. In other words, a life has, you're not very kind to me. Uh, you're, you're being rough with me. And uh, verse 27, you would even cast lots over the fatherless and bargain for your friend. He's rebuking a life as. This is amazing. As diseased and destitute as he is, he still has some spunk, which means there's a strength of character here. Uh, verse 29, let no injustice be done. Turn now. My vindication is at stake. In other words, you're laying it on me here and uh, so on. So 
Uh, Job, in chapter 7, Job uh, is still going. Look at verse 3 of 7. So I am allotted months of emptiness, nights of misery, uh, typical of the sick person. Underline in verse 4, the night is long. The night is long. Long nights. Pain keeps you awake. I don't know if any of us could appreciate verse 5. He's sitting on this ash heap. He has these oozing sores, boils, from his head to his feet. All right, you medical people, what is the largest human organ? The skin. The skin. And this is where his trouble is. Think about that, you know. If it's your appendix, well, that's one thing, you know. But uh, your your skin, if you if you got dermatological problems and you're covered, <laughs> great day. So uh, these oozing sores, and now days have passed, and verse five, my flesh is clothed with worms. It's rotting. They're coming and working on the decaying stuff. Uh, you, you, uh, uh, hold your stomach. Uh, oh, mercy. And dirt, my skin hardens, then breaks out afresh. A typical description of a boil, really. Uh, and then verse 6 is famous. 7 6. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent in your underlining without hope. Without hope. If this guy were in a top Chicago hospital, Rush, Loyola, uh, U of C, he would be in trouble. But he has no medical attention, remember. He's just sitting on an ash pile and uh, trying to care for himself without hope. Verse 7, remember, my life is a breath. He feels he's that close to death, a breath and I'm gone. Verse 9 of chapter 7. A cloud fades and vanishes. He who goes down to Sheol does not come up. Uh, <laughs> you poke around at different translations. The Hebrew, this, the, the translators went to sleep, got lazy or something. It's a, Sheol is a Hebrew word, and they didn't translate it. They just transliterated it, just carried the letters over. And so, what does it mean? Well, in the Old Testament, you have to get the meaning from the context. In some places, it means grave. Uh, the grave. In other places, it means the realm of the dead. And the equivalent word, the Greek word in the New Testament, uh, is Hades. And uh, you get the full scope on this in Luke 16, the rich man and Lazarus. We don't have time to go into that. But uh, he who goes down to Sheol does not come up. In other words, this is kind of a final thing. Verse 16. I loathe my life. Here you're getting little windows into the mind of Job. 20. If I sin, what do I do to you, you watcher of mankind? In other words, how have I hurt you? So Job is through. We're to, we're to chapter 8. Bildad. 
Uh, Bill, Dad, if if uh, a life has speaks from experience, what I have seen, Bill, Dad goes on tradition. Look at verse eight. Please uh, inquire of bygone years. Considers what the fathers searched out. In other words, what do we know from the past? What's tradition? And he starts pouring this out on onto. Uh, and it's basically the same thing, that uh, you're a wretch of a sinner, and that's why you've got all this trouble. Look, look at, at verse, it's in poetic form, but it's the same. Look at verse 11. Can papyrus grow where there is no marsh uh, alongside the river? Uh, yes, no. In other words, could, could you have all this trouble and you didn't sin a lot, you, you know, is what he's saying, verse 11. Uh, and so that's the gist of Bildad. So Eliphaz has spoken, Job responds. Bildad has spoken, chapter 8, chapter 9, Job responds. There's a whale of a question in verse 2. But how can a man be right before God? Boy, you have to almost come to the New Testament before you get the answer to that one. And the answer, of course, is, is all through Christ and he bears our sins. Now, how You know, how can a person get straight out? And the power of God, verse uh, 5 he removes mountains, six, he shakes the earth, uh, seven, he commands the sun, uh, seals up the stars, seven, uh, ten, he does great things, so on. Uh, remember, Job has no Bible. He's 2000 B.C., there is no Bible. And there's no wisp of any prophet entering his life with a word from God. You talk about a having a spiritual minimum. He knows, you, you, you look at uh, five mountains, six earth, uh, seven, the stars, uh, eight, the waves of the sea. The most of the knowledge that he has of God comes from nature. Heavens declare the glory of God and so on. Great things he's done and so on. Chapter, chapter 9. Uh, verse 27, if I say I'll forget my complaint, I'll put off my sad face and be of good cheer. Oh, my. Uh, how can I do that? Uh, I become, verse 28, afraid of my suffering. But you really want to mark verse 33 of chapter 9. This is a shaker. There is no arbitrator between us, between him and God, to lay his hand upon his bow. King James says, daysman. Uh, the word ambudsman. Uh, we could also say, what would be another term? Lawyer. Lawyer, yes. No, yeah, yeah. I have no one to plead my case. I, I have no arbitrator. A uh, lawyer, uh, ambudsman, uh, and there is another word. Umpire. That's what oh, okay. And there's another word. <laughs> what? Mediator. That's it. Mediator. Now, that should ring a bell. Is there a text that pops into your mind? In 1 Timothy? 1 Timothy 2, 5. There's one God 
and one mediator, 1 Timothy 2, 5, one God and one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ. By the way, that text wipes out a whole slice of Roman Catholicism. What? It's the praying to Mary, Mary, praying to, they're all, no. The text says there's one. There are not, not many, there's one. It, and it says who it is, it's Jesus. So you don't pray to saints, you don't pray to Mary, you don't, uh, you know, confess to, to a priest who pronounces absolution. But uh, Job is fishing for what he doesn't know here. Uh, yes. It, that, that, that's right. And we do not know who that is. We I do did, not know. I did some, uh, what did you find? That it's a mythical sea monster. <laughs> 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 well, I this great sea Your monster source for that. that. I don't remember. You don't. I, it's, it's at home. It's, it's, a, it's in the footnotes of my it's in the footnotes of New the International Version Bible. Okay. Because I have several uh, resources okay. Okay, good. All right. But it's not the Rahab of Joshua 2. No. I think it's, no, it wasn't. Never mind. I'll have, I'll have to look and see. <laughs> look up and see. Okay. Now, chapter 10. I loathe my life. Well, uh, you would too. Uh, he's talking to God. I will say to God, verse 2, don't condemn me. Let me know why you contend against me. In other words, he's looking at all these troubles coming from God. He says, what's gone? Verse 8, your hands fashioned and made me. And verse 9, made me out of clay, you know. Verse 12, you granted me life. Verse 20, my days are few. Okay, we're to the last guy now. Uh, chapter 11, Zophar. Now, if Eliphaz came relying on his observations and experience and, uh, and uh, uh, Bildad on the past, on tradition, Zophar, he's the religious fellow. Look, verse 4, my doctrine is pure, I am clean before your eyes, and so on. He's taking this. Uh, verse 7, can you find out the deep things of God? or limit the Almighty, and so on. But he has basically the same thing. Uh, Job, you're just a messed up sinner, and that's why all of this has come down on your head. Chapter 12. Uh, Job, it's amazing, considering his bereavement, considering his physical, his medical condition, that he has as much spunk in him as he, as he does. You, you look at verse 2. He's had it with these three fellows now. He's heard all three. Verse 2, no doubt, here's sarcasm running rich. No doubt, you are the people. Wisdom will die with you. I have understanding as well as you, and I am not... <laughs> Look at him, and he's saying this. I am not inferior to you, for I'm a laughing stock to my friends, who called, uh, I who called to God, and he answered me, just and blameless man, and so on. Uh, but he's on these, these three fellows. Verse 7, ask the beasts, they'll teach you. You're so stupid, the animals could instruct you. <laughs> The birds uh, could teach you guys. Verse 8, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, the inanimate bushes could, could tell you some things. Even the fish, verse 8. Oh, my. And uh, in his, look at 10, in his hand, God, is the life of every living thing, the breath of all mankind. 
Verse 12, wisdom is with the aged, hopefully. There are some old fools, you know, but uh, uh, you, you ought to be wiser as you go because the longer you live, the more mistakes you make and the more failures you have. And if you ha are mentally awake at all, you learn from your mistakes and you learn failures are valuable. Uh, the Ashburn Baptist Church is a success. Before the Ashburn Baptist Church, I started another, which was a 100 percent, that's a long story, but a 100 percent failure. When Ashburn Baptist was started, I thought, we'll just do everything the opposite. And it worked. So the failure was very valuable. Uh, and uh, so the older you get, the, the wiser. And God, verse 23, as you watch the evening news, remember verse 23. He makes nations great and he destroys them. Verse 13, chapter 13, verse 2, I am not inferior to you. Uh, verse 4, you are worthless physicians. <laughs> He's fired them. <laughs> Five, that you would shut up. And God, verse 10, will rebuke you. Verse 15 of chapter 13 is famous. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In other words, uh, how much can you handle and survive? But then you look at verse 28. <laughs> oh, man wastes away like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. How about that? Uh, amazing. We go. Uh, as you might surmise, I've seen a lot of sick people, and I've been in and out of a lot of hospitals. And I can usually tell when a person's headed for the back door instead of the front door without talking to the doctors. When they have multiple, not one problem, but multiple problems, and in treating one, they're in trouble with the other, in treating that one, they're in trouble with the third, and uh, you've seen this. Yes, many times. Ah, and... You treat one, you treat one problem, and it makes Aggravate the another. Other, uh, other problem worse or aggravated yeah. and so on and so forth. Yes. A and I say, well, boy, this, this is the end. And you die. Well, that's verse 28. There, there we are. That's it. And 14, Job is still going. Man is born of a woman in a few days and full of trouble. Uh, five, his days are determined that you don't know when you'll die, but God does. You have appointed limits. Verse 5, uh, 14. Uh, oh, 14 is a winner. If a man dies, shall he live again? What a, what a question, and we're not through with that. So we're to the end of cycle number one. Got it? We're to the end. Now you should label. We're in the second cycle now, cycle number two, which goes chapters 15 to 21. Cycle number two, chapters 15 to 21. Uh, a life as is on stage again, verse four, but you are doing away with the fear of God. In other words, in verse five, a life as has not changed his tune. Your iniquity, in other words, Job, you fess up, you know, you're a bad person. Uh, eight, have you listened to the counsel of God? 
And nine, what do you know that we don't know? In other words, you think you're smart, we're as smart as you are, and so on. And uh, verse 20, it's the wicked man, and so on. Uh, verse 34, the, the godless. So now for chapter 16, Job comes back. Uh, verse 2 is sort of puts its thumb on it. Miserable comforters are you all. They do not know how to visit a sick person. They're not helping him. They're... Uh, Pointing out. Yeah. Sense. Verse 3, windy words. And verse 4, I could speak as you do if I were in your place. <laughs> oh. oh, Job's coming back at them. Uh, let's drop down. Well, uh, he, t he turns to God. Verse 19, he who testifies for me is on high. In other words, you, you fellows aren't on my side, but God is. Uh, so on. Job continues. If you want a, a picture of depression, here it is, 17.1. My spirit is broken. Uh, in other words, here's depression at the bottom, and the graveyard is, is ready for me. Here is a case of severe depression. And uh, verse 4, since you have closed your hearts to understanding. Verse 10, I shall not find a wise man among you. In other words, you fellows are not on. And verse 15, where then is my hope? He's desperate. Who will see my hope? Uh, if if you want a, a, a case, a textbook case of depression, chapter 17, and this often comes with illness, a, a person uh, is, is mentally, mentally depressed and needs cheering up. And that's why people send flowers, send a card, go to visit, you know, and anything. All right. It was a Bildad is on, chapter 18. Uh, and uh, he's, he's speaking of death. And verse 8, it's pictured as a net. Verse 9, a trap and a snare. Verse 10, a hidden rope. Job replies, 19, how long will you torment me and break me in pieces with your words? He's on to this. Uh, 14, my relatives have failed me, my close friends. Uh, the famous phrase that's entered into the English language by the skin of my teeth. Verse 20, you catch it? Uh, you know, I escaped by the skin of my teeth. Verse 23, oh, that my words were written, and they, they are. And we can't skip verse 25. I know that my Redeemer, th this is astounding considering the time and the poverty of information that he has. I know that my Redeemer lives. He's speaking obviously under the Holy Spirit. Lives, he'll stand upon the earth after my skin has been destroyed and yet my flesh, I shall see God, I shall see for myself, my eyes shall behold. What a statement of the resurrection. We're going to pick up at 20 next week, but uh, finish the book. Chapter 22 starts the third cycle, which goes chapters 22 through 31. Best part of the book is, is coming. Uh, but finish reading the book this week, and you'll be, you'll be all set. Let's pray. Father, we thank you 
for the depth of your word, for the insight, for the help. Grant that we may take this and use it for our own help and good and for the blessing of others. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. I hope his boy.